Hello, I'm Travis Edwards. I'm, I'm 15 years old and I'm an inventor from Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm going to be going into 10th grade this year and uh, not quite old enough to have a job, but I am looking forward to when I can join the workforce. And so uh, I'll share my screen for the presentation. So the invention I would like to share with you guys today is uh, the follow-through fixer. And I bet you guys are wondering, what, what is a follow-through fixer? And uh, I think that's a great question. So, um, whoops, okay. The follow-through fixer is a basketball shooting device that is worn on a basketball player's shooting arm that is designed to straighten your follow-through Make sure your finger spacing is correct so you can have correct form and also quicken the release of your basketball shot. So that way you can shoot quicker and you can make your shots faster. And so I'm a basketball player. Basketball is one of my favorite hobbies. I love just going outside and shooting some hoops. And so I've played basketball for a long time. And um, I was noticing that uh, I wasn't shooting too accurately with my shot. And I attributed that to my follow through going every, every direction. It, it wasn't good. Uh, I think it made me very inaccurate while shooting. And so I thought I needed to fix this. And I tried many things. I, I just tried to do a repetition to fix my follow through. I tried just to go very close to the basket and shoot with one hand and just tried to shoot over and over again, making sure that my follow through would be straight. My arm, my wrist, and my fingers would go down in one straight line. But it didn't really seem to help and that was, that was a little discouraging. And so I, I thought if only there was some sort of device I could wear that on my arm, that would make sure that my hand went down in a straight motion. I thought that would just be so good. And so I looked around a little bit, but I really, I really couldn't find anything that I was looking for that made both my wrist and fingers go down straight. And so I thought, you know, I should, I should just make my own shooting device. And so I've quickly just got some rubber bands together and made a quick prototype to see if my idea would, would really be successful. And it turns out it, it worked quite well, but I knew I needed to make some um, modifications and tweaks to it, for it, to really, for it to really work well. And so one of the things I actually made during the inventing, the tweaking process was this finger spacer, this finger comb right here. And so I originally designed that with the purpose of making sure that the rubber bands could indirectly pull down my fingers. Because first, I just had the rubber bands going around my fingers. And though it worked, it, it wasn't very comfortable because when my arm went down, the rubber bands would tighten around the fingers and uh, that, I knew that wouldn't be good for shooting a basketball. And so additional benefits besides just uh, indirectly pulling down the fingers is that it makes sure your hand stays in the correct form when you shoot. And also it allows you to easily take the device on and off so you can practice with it and then without it very easily. But I'd say the hardest thing I had to do was find a way to make sure that this Velcro strap right here would stay anchored to the forearm. The Velcro strap needs to stay anchored to the forearm because if it if it slips up on the arm, the rubber bands will lose tension and you won't be able to have it guide your hand down in a straight line. It, it wouldn't really serve much of a purpose. And so I went through many iterations of trying to keep the Velcro strap down. I first just tried to like add more weight onto it, thinking that could hold it down, uh, but it didn't. Then I thought maybe I should uh, coat the back in some rubber to provide extra friction that didn't really work. And then I thought maybe I should try and get like a basketball sleeve and wear it underneath. That didn't really work either. But then I thought, what if I added belt loops and looped it through the, the loops to keep it anchored down? That kind of worked, but it didn't really, 
And then I thought maybe I should use like some ace bandage clips to clip it down onto the Velcro strap. And that didn't really work either. But eventually I came up with this design of putting a wristband sweatband underneath the Velcro strap. And so this allows for there to be extra cushion for the Velcro strap. Because originally I would have to tighten it really tight to make it stay down, but that, that wouldn't be good. But this, uh, the sweatband provides an extra layer of cushion so I can tighten it, but it would still feel quite comfortable. And also due to its unique fabric, it provides even more friction so the Velcro strap won't slip up, slip up onto your wrist. And so there were also more smaller modifications I had to make, such as what type of rubber bands I wanted to use and what type of Velcro strap I wanted to use. But uh, in the end, that didn't really affect my device much. And so personally, I thought my device worked really well because it fixed my shot and I was shooting much straighter and much more accurate. But I knew that didn't necessarily mean that my my invention actually really worked. So I thought I needed to contact an expert in the field for them to try out my follow through fixer. So I sent a copy of it to Hoops Kings, which is a basketball specific sporting goods company to see what they thought of it. And so through email collaboration, we thought the best thing I could do was make sure that the follow through fixer could be available to a wider range of, a, of, a, of basketball players. I thought, that I should make different sizes of finger cones. So that way it could fit even the smallest player's hand. So young players who are just beginning their basketball journey will be able to benefit from it. And also they just wanted me to make sure that the arm right here could fit around many different sizes of arms. So that way it would be more one size fits all and easier to manufacture. And so today, Ah, uh, the follow through fixer has received a provisional patent from the United States Patent and Trademark Office, which I am very excited about because it pr protects my invention for one year. And uh, I also created a website for the follow through fixer, which you can see at followthroughfixer.com. It's currently being sold online and at a sporting goods store called Play It Again Sports. The follow through fixer has been awarded and recognized by uh, the National Museum of Education, Cricket and Media, and most recently, Innovation World. And so looking towards the future, I'd really like to file for a full utility patent. So that way uh, my invention could be protected for years to come. Thank you. Wow, Travis, congratulations. Thank you. That's, you know, you went through the whole process of um, getting feedback and trying and not giving up and persistence and and solving a problem that was important to you that'll help a lot of other people. How long did it take you to go through from when you first had this idea to where you are now? How long has been the how long has the process been? Yes, ma'am. I feel that it probably was about six months to a uh, nine months of a process, but. Uh, it kind of got spaced out a little bit. It was more in like small chunks when I, when I could have a lot of time to, to research about uh, the basketball shooting device. Yeah, I think. Yeah, oops, sorry, Amy. Go I ahead. Just say, I think that's good for kids and people to know because I'm a teacher and like a lot of my kids do inventions, but I think they think that it's something that just comes overnight or in a week or something. And I think it's important to know that sometimes inventions take a long time to come up with ideas and, and go through the prototypes and to get feedback. And so I was curious to know, you've done a great job. Go Thank ahead, Jim. No, Travis, uh, I, I, I am not a patent lawyer and I don't know anything about patents, okay? Um, but we had an organization earlier tonight, um, the United Inventors Association. Um, you should Google them and then contact them, and they give advice and support. Uh, they're not selling anything, but uh, United Inventors Association and the National Academy of Inventors, um, contact them and, and see uh, if they can be of any help and support to you. Yes, sir. I think I should definitely do that. I, I'm like all 
Well, that's great. That's great. What was the most challenging part? Do you feel like that was uh, the most difficult for you through all of this? I, I think it was probably uh, just doing some of the modifications to make sure that the it stayed anchored to the forearm because not only did I have to go through a lot of iterations, but sometimes I felt like I would get very close to finding a good design, but then I'd find a flaw in it, which just wouldn't, wouldn't make the whole device not really work. So it was, a, it was difficult in many different ways. Were you able to try it with some other people? I know you sent it to the company and everything, but did you have any of your friends or anybody try it out and did it help them? Yes, ma'am. I, uh, I got my family members to try it, and I sent it uh, to a few cousins I have, but uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to play basketball this year on a, in a team setting, but now, now, uh, now I think this year I'll be able to share it with more of my teammates. Great. Very good. Very good. Um, are you going to let them win, or are you going to beat them now? Hopefully, I'll, I'll beat them, or at least I'll be very competitive with them. Well, I, I, I hope they're still your friends. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, congratulations, Travis. Very good job. Thank, thank you very much for sharing this with us. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come here. This was very fun. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.